chapters around antibiotics. Any more um, thoughts on similarities and differences, please? The aim here. Yep, GPPS is voluntary. So yes, you can at any time access the GPPS and um, and complete it. Whereas the WHO, um, it will really be, you can use the tool if you want to, but you do need the your ministry to identify hospitals. You may want to volunteer to your ministry and say you would want to do it, but they may have a process of um, randomizing um, hospitals as well. Okay, so they're coming fast now. Um, yep, so WHO needs to be invited. <clears throat> so haven't used WHO PPS yet, but looks similar. So in reality, both of them, um, Global PPS and um, WHO PPS have their history, original history in the ECDC or ESAC um, PPS um, from many, many years ago. Although they've obviously both been adapted for um, the different contexts. Um, for countries without national support, GPPS seems a better tool for individual institutions. I agree. So I think, you know, there's something around if you're looking at your individual institution and you're wanting to develop your interventions, then you need to really try and think of what, what gives you that tool. Um, there may be possibility for you to um, use, you know, when you collect information from one to see how you can adapt it and Put into GPPS if you want that automated feedback. You know they really present you with slides ready for you to present to your to your clinicians and to be able to make decisions. Um, global PPS for all countries. WHO PPS low income. I would say that WHO will probably say that that's not hundred percent true. I think WHO PPS has taken more into consideration LMICs, but I would believe that they would think that it's for any country to be able to use. Um, but you're right that there, you know, things like missed doses it is quite important and quite the reality. Um, and so th those are the kind of information that, that is not available in global PPS, but is available in WHO PPS. Um, so for all the PPS, they all start at 8 a.m. at start time. Exactly, that's true. Um, WHO PPS needs consenting of the patient. Peter, just help me with that. Is that true? Peter, you're on mute. Do you need consent from each patient for WHO PPS? Um, no, but um, some countries, when we were asking, they said they mention this as a possibility so it's not that it's there usually it's uh it's coming from the medical director and that opens the floor but there can be situations uh that it can be uh, on an individual basis so I, I i mean i i would struggle with that that concept and i would say that you know as peter said it would be maybe a hospital level decision but this may be where you need to go through the ethics team it's quite difficult if you've if you've got patients in icu how do you get consent from them so there may be something that needs to be done from an ethics review point of view to be able to to work through that process so similarities survey objectives gpps individual hospitals can participate GPPS more comprehensive for healthcare associated infections and biomarkers. So yeah, that's a really important point. If you want to look at your healthcare associated infections, and I know that they've also added COVID as an indication as well now. So those are some of the things that you need to consider. Um, thank you for the presentation. For those of us in private hospitals, embracing GPPS is an awesome tool for QA and QC. I'm assuming you mean by QA quality assurance and quality control. Totally agree. Quality improvement and also developing of interventions. Um, someone said, yeah, the survey should be done on the weekdays and holidays and weekends excluded. That's true. Um, so another question, um, biomarkers and HAIs, they're not on the WHO PPS, are they, Peter? No, they're not. That's what... um, and the rationale, because I had suggested that when we were writing it, and NLMIC countries, it's, it's a bit less common to have um, uh, procalcitonin and, and uh, CRP reported uh, routinely. So this is about the biomarkers that are available. Um, yeah. So WHO is good for countrywide multicentric surveys. With not, yeah, I, I really agree. So if you're thinking about, so the way to think about it is if you want to know your national data 
Um, although you can also get that through GPPS, um, but if you really want at a national level and also reporting through WHO and reporting globally um, through a central reporting system, it is important to participate in WHO PPS. But again, that's you know from a ministry level. So for for um, for colleagues who are within the ministry that are attending today, hopefully you're seeing the differences and how. Um, both tools can be used. Um, so you, you may want to assign some to WHO, but it, it's a discussion that needs to be had within the country. Um, so Adisi says also says, GPP has become very standardized though, a common name in any antimicrobial stewardship program. I won't read the rest of that up. <laughs> um, I'll, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much um, for um, contributing to that. <laughs> Thank you all so much for um, contributing to that session. Um, so I've got, I think I've got, um, how long do I have for this next session? Um, so I have another nine minutes to just go through the slides we have. And I've got, it's, there are very few slides. And actually you've all picked up um, a lot of the key points. So someone here said, is it possible to merge both tools such that depending on the level of institution, one platform is, is what we use for all. I don't know that we can merge it in a way that, you know, goes across both of them, but there may be possibilities, and we're discussing this, that if, you know, if you've participated in, definitely from a, I have to be careful how I say this, if you've participated in WHA PPS, it may be possible to enter some of your data into global PPS platform, so that you have that feedback that you need in your hospital for your local interventions. I doubt we can do it the other way around. So if you participated in Global PPS, I doubt you'll be able to go to WHO PPS and platform. Peter and Anne, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, so Anne is reporting said that in, in Europe, they integrated the ECDC PPS, which is equivalent WHO PPS, but for Europe, they integrated it into um, the global PPS platform so that individual organizations could have their feedback data. So yes, that's a possibility that way. I doubt global no, PPS. The other, way, the other way is not possible. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so very quickly, um, next slide, please. Um, Kieran. So in terms of general principles, you all also highlighted the voluntary basis for global PPS, whereas with WHO PPS is that country level Ministry of Health or WHO country office. Um, the importance of um, healthcare stated infections and resistance patterns, whereas WHO is focused much on the antimicrobial use um, and there are very simple quality indicators. And with the global PPS as our stewardship tool, you can um, look at your indicators. Um, you can get immediate feedback to your um, to your prescribe to your prescribers after you've validated the data. That's really important. Um, and it says no informed consent at a, at a patient level, whereas the WHO PPS is saying you may need informed or written consent. But that is really about what your country um, wants you to do. So that's very um, that's country specific. Next slide. Um, and in terms of the protocol and data management, um, both of them have got standardized protocols and you collect detailed data on all patients under surveillance for WHO PPS. However, for global PPS, you collect patient characteristics for admitted patients. So it's um, slightly different in terms of who you collect data for between global PPS and WHO PPS. And there's an online IT platform for the WHO PPS as well. So you can put your data on there and the data storage can be at a hospital or national level. Um, with the um, global PPS, again, there's a web-based tool. There's a quality assurance approach, data validation process. And it's really important to build that in. And then the data is the data storage is at the University of Antwerp in Belgium but you can use it to create your own database and the hospital remains the owner of their own data. Next slide, please. Um, so in terms of feedback and reporting, um, the responsibility for data management and retrieval is at the hospital level. Feedback is not automated. So by that, we mean with the global PPS, once your data is inputted and you've validated it, 
you get a automated um, slide set and I think um, and also spreadsheet that just analyzes your data and provides it. So it's an easier way for you to present back to your prescribers. Again, with WHO PPS, you can get feedback, but it's not it's not once you enter the data. If that makes sense. Um, next slide, please. Peter and Anne, do feel free to correct me if I've got any of these um, slightly incorrect. Um, both of them have detailed information for inpatients. However, for global PPS, the focus is on patients that are on antimicrobial you, that have antimicrobials prescribed only. And for WHO PPS, it's all patients that you collect patient information on. Okay, but very similar detailed patient information should be collected for both. Next slide, please. And then in terms of sampling, um, with Global PPS, there is no sampling on your first participation, but subsequently you can focus on ward types and so not so much patient sampling, but on ward types. So you can say, for example, first time you collect for all the wards and then next time if you want to follow up, maybe because you've decided that you want to focus on surgery or you want to focus on medical wards, then you can focus on just those wards subsequently and you get your data back to allow you to have a longitudinal, longitudinal follow up. But you do not sample within the, within the hospital or within a ward or within patients. Whereas with WHOPPS, sampling is at patient level. So if you have um, a hospital with 500 to 800 inpatient beds, you can decide that you will only include one or two patients per ward. Um, and But the decision about the sampling needs to be taken at a national level by the Ministry of Health in the first instance. I, I really encourage that people um, collect data systematically and throughout. And so that's certainly what we try to do um, in the UK, but and, and the reason for that is it allows you to. Um, but again, you know, different. Remember, with WHO PPS, it's about country level data rather than individual hospital data, and that's where there is a difference and why sampling may work for one but not the other. Next one. Um, so, in terms of therapeutic groups, we've gone over this over and over and over again. So, hopefully, you all remember now that with the global PPS, you can include um, antibiotics and other drugs used for TB, antimalarials, and antivirals, as well as antifungals, not topical use. For both of them, topical antimicrobial for topical use is excluded. Um, and for, um, for WHO, you do not include those um, antimicrobials because they have other networks that collect the same information. So there may be a way to be able to collect the two together somehow or merge the, to have the information that you need. Um, just something I forgot to mention earlier, if you're on social media or Twitter, please feel free to tweet any of the um, information you're learning using the hashtag CWPAMS. Um, next slide, please. So, um, this is just an opportunity if there are any final questions on this session, and then we'll have a short break. Um, and during the break, we'll share different information within the chat. So do feel free to, um, to just keep an eye on there. Um, but the main focus is for you to have a break from the screen um, for a few minutes, and then we'll be back. So I'm just gonna see what question um, so we have here. So there's a question, which is best for hospitals to use if you want to begin? The, the, the simple answer is if your Ministry of Health has not asked you to participate in a PPS, then global PPS is the only one you have an option to use. Having one tool is important. I do think that the tools are independent and have served different purposes. Um, and so, yeah, and they serve different purposes. So. Um, could these data collection tools be employed for research purposes? Yes, in terms of if you wanted to do some research potentially, but you would need to go through a full ethics approval if it's for research. So obviously when hospitals are using global PPS um, and we're using global PPS in the context of CWPAMS, we are using it for the purposes of service improvement quality improvement within the hospital, not generic research. Um, we are trying to ensure that our service to our patients in those hospitals is what we're trying to focus on. That's certainly the point for global, for global PPS. WHO PPS in a way is similar, but it's trying to do it at a national level. 
how do we assure data security? So when you enter data into the either of the platforms, you are not entering patient identifiable data. So you cannot link the data back to an individual patient. But obviously, you're right in terms of the data for your institution and um, the global PPS team have um, really strong data sharing information and data security information. And I believe that WHO will have the same as well. Um, it will be helpful to know what you mean about data security. Is it that you're worried about your hospital data leaking or is it about individual patients? Um, so that's the question. Um, so that's a further question on that. Um, let's have a look if there's any other questions. So certainly um, we, we're talking about the. Yes, if your hospital institute does not have an antimicrobial stewardship program, this is a perfect time to do this um, because actually it gives you and we'll talk about this in the next session. So do join us after the break. Um, we talk about how you. Um, can develop interventions for your hospital um, to allow you to start a stewardship program. We also um, create, WHO also has a antimicrobial stewardship um, healthcare facility assessment tool, um, which you may want to use. And WHO has just literally um, in the last week published a, mm -hmm. an antimicrobial stewardship policy document um, which is also really useful and includes um, the the um, healthcare facility um, survey that you can use to assess your stewardship and identify where your key areas of focus should be. I will put that into the chat shortly um, so you have that information. Many countries have data security laws in terms of transmitting. Okay, fine. Again, so you will need to work through that process within your hospitals and within your countries. What sort of feedback is provided following Petabai? Okay, so do you mean Global PPS or WHO? For Global PPS, in the next session or the afternoon sessions, we will give you examples of the feedback data you have and we'll in fact ask you um, to become um, stewardship experts and try and develop interventions based on the feedback. So um, Ines and I will present to you as the data collectors and then we'll ask you to become the antimicrobial stewardship committee and highlight where you would want to focus attention for your hospital. Okay, who's responsible for data analysis? Um, so for the global PPS, it's done for you automated through the system. Um, so you get your feedback data. Um, for WHO PPS, Peter, what happens with the data analysis? I don't know. So currently the data submitted for the first wave uh, for the first um, is being analyzed uh, at headquarters. Um, and there will be um, a more of a, of a formal report, um, generic report, so it will not be um, the individual reports, which are also being worked upon, but there will be a formal report um, on the uh, number of countries and hospitals that participated and what the outcome was. Um, uh, it will be uh, blinded, so there will be no uh, um, um, reference to the specific countries which did be better or worse, uh, but there will also be um, similar reports to the country uh, headquarters, to the country uh, Ministry for Health with national reports and possibly, I'm not sure about this, possibly even individual hospital reports. But the first report will be uh, available in uh, September of this year. At least uh, I had a conversation with uh, the WHO headquarters last week and that's what they said, that by the end of September there will be the formal report which will be in the public domain and then there will be the country reports and individual hospital reports which will be uh, close to the respective countries stroke hospital. so can i check when was the first wave done no no this is the first wave um, yeah, when was that done when did people collect data for the first wave um actually it started um uh, in 2019 and i know uh, uh tanzania participated with a okay. convenience sample. Um, uh, there were, I think, about 10 countries 
in total. Um, I, I'm not involved in the data analysis of this. That's fine, so, yeah. Uh, but I was involved until the um, pilot, which was done in two hospitals in, in uh, Dar es Salaam in, in Tanzania. Um, and uh, then there were, this was um, extended further to, I think it was something like eight or 10 countries, Anglophonic and Francophonic countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you, Peter. So for those who collected data in 2019, um, the overall report will be available at a global level um, in September of this year. Um, and then after that, um, they will get the country level data um, back to the ministries. And I know Peter said he wasn't sure about hospital level data, but there may be some hospital level data um, from the data that was collected in 2019 provided afterwards as well um, to countries um, for possible dissemination. It was started in 2019. Some most hospitals participated um, uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, and obviously everything was... Uh, paused because of COVID. Paused yeah. because of COVID. So th yeah. there were major... I think the main question was basically what the, the feedback. So that's what I was trying to get is that from a WHO point of view, it's the feedback comes back together globally and then nationally. Um, and with the global PPS, you get your own feedback um, as you enter the data and you validate the data. Um, yeah. And I think obviously with the WHO PPS, you have your you have your data, so there's nothing stopping. Um, well, potentially hospitals can analyze some of their data to be able to develop their interventions should they wish to. Yes, of course. What they cannot do at that point is compare with other hospitals. Yeah. Where the global PPS will give you the feedback. Uh, comparing to the region, etc. So yeah, that's, that's so, a difference. But um, uh, the idea is also that the uh, the platform they used to use Epicenter, now it's uh, RedCap, no, Epiconcept, now they're moving to RedCap. It's, it's uh, an IT thing. So um, the, the reporting will be uh, more rapid because there will be an it will not be as automated as the uh, global PPS system is, but and um, the WHO does not communicate directly with the hospitals. So it's always yeah. communication is always directed at national level between the WHO country office and or Ministry for Health to the regional office and uh, the headquarters in, in uh, Geneva. Yeah. So, so, so yeah so for those who um so yeah so, so peter highlighting there that you know who focus is their communication is at a national level so that that data will always go back to the ministry of health first um and also that's similar with the ecdc so the european level data that's been going on for many years is that um that when the report is published it's published at a european level you ec europe yeah european union level european countries level and um, but what we used to do um within the uk was also to provide individualized, so as a, I, I also have a role within um, the National Institute for Public Health and we lead on that for Europe and we provide hospital level data back to them. Um, but that's something we did separately. So this is something that ministries of health or uh, public health institutions may want to discuss with their ministries of health about. Okay, we've run over my session now um, and we need to have some time for break. Can I suggest that we um, take a break now, please? And that we are back. Um, um, the, Diana, can I still add something, if you don't mind? Uh, we are really, we're, I, we're 10 minutes Just, so far. Okay. 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 You, you don't mind, um, because I don't mind to respond to the person who asked the question, how do we assure data security? Because this is a really important and I issue. When you put it in the chat, I'm so sorry, Anne, but we are... Oh, maybe we come back later, later. no over. problem. Maybe yeah. okay. actually in the Q&A session after the break, that's yeah. another opportunity. Yeah, so very good, thank you. Go on a break now, please, and that we're back at um, 12.10, please. So 10 minutes past 12. So if we have a 10 minutes break, um, I, so I recommend that you st stay on the platform, but mute yourself and keep your cameras off um, as they are and um, just have a break. We will not be talking again until 10 past 12. We will sh we're going into the Q&A session now. Um, 
So this is an opportunity for you to ask any further questions. Um, and, you know, we've had quite a few, quite a bit of time to ask questions and to interact through um, the last couple of sessions. But if you've got any final questions, you can put them into the chat. Just before we do that, I mentioned um, the WHO. There was a question from a colleague on the line about if you haven't done antimicrobial stewardship before, what do you do? So I just wanted to quickly highlight this new WHO guidance on integrated. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Um, their colleagues in the waiting room, please. Um, co-hosts. Um, so WHO policy guidance on integrated antimicrobial stewardship activities. This is really focused on the um, on 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 national colleagues or colleagues in the ministry ministries of health. Um, but one of the key points I wanted to just highlight is that towards the end of the policy, um, which focuses on national activities towards the end of the policy there are some assessment tools there's one for national level assessment and then there's one for healthcare facility assessment and the healthcare facility assessment is the one that was published i think in 2019 um and so you can um use this at a at a at a healthcare facility level so you need to choose which of the tools you want to use so there's a national assessment tool and then if you scroll further down there's the hospital or healthcare facility assessment tool so this is an opportunity for you to decide if you want to um if you want to focus on basically you 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 for each so it's an opportunity for you to assess your overall stewardship activities within your hospital that's what it's there for within your healthcare facility and then you can decide you know what level you are at, at a baseline um you know has it been identified by the management leadership no planned not started partially implemented fully implemented so there's a whole range and within that it will be is a section on on surveillance activities or AMS actions and monitoring of data um, and education and training as well. So really monitoring and surveillance really gives you an opportunity to be able to look at your um, overall healthcare facility and then identify your key areas for action. So for example, if you are the baseline now where you haven't done any um, regular audits, but by the time you get to next year, you've started to use e either of the PPS, um, you'll be able to move on and say, um, you know, now a priority partially implemented um, and things like that. So I hope that helps for those who have not um, started any um, stewardship interventions yet within your hospital. It's a really good way for you to understand where, where to start from um, and, and where to focus your attention. 